Sutra. Sabbuti arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, From distant compass until now, my mind has been unobstructed. I remember as many of my past lives as there are sands in the Ganges River. From the beginning, in my mother's womb, I knew emptiness and tranquility to the extent that the ten directions became empty and I caused living beings to be satisfied to the nature of emptiness. Commentary Saputi's name means born into emptiness, Kung Shang. Because at his birth, all the treasuries in his household were suddenly empty. Not a single gem remained. Seven days after his birth, the treasures all reappeared. So he was also called Good Appearance, Shan Xian. His father and mother went to have this fortune told. It read, Both good and lucky, Qi Shan Qi Qi. So they also named him Good Luck Shan Qi. He arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, From distant compass until now, my mind has been unobstructed. My mind and nature attained freedom from hindrance. I remember as many of my past lives as there are sands in the Ganges River. From the beginning in my mother's womb, I knew emptiness and tranquility. I recognized the nature of emptiness to the extent that the ten directions became empty. All the worlds in the ten directions were empty, and I caused living beings to be satisfied to the nature of emptiness. I enabled living beings to be simultaneously satisfied to the principles of the nature of emptiness. Sutra, having received the first common revelation that the enlightened nature is true emptiness, that the nature of emptiness is perfect and bright, I attained a hardship and suddenly entered into the first Kamwan, sea of magnificent bright emptiness, with knowledge and views identical with the Buddha. I was certified as being beyond learning. In the liberation of the nature of emptiness, I am unsurpassed. Commentary, having received the first Kamwan's revelation that the enlightened nature is true emptiness, that the nature of emptiness is perfect and bright. The nature is the same as emptiness. The treasury of the first come one, the enlightenment to true emptiness, is perfect and bright. The emptiness and the treasury of the first come one are both perfect and bright. I attained a hardship because I understood the basic substance of the nature of the treasury of the first come one. I attained the level of a hardship and suddenly entered into the first common sea of magnificent bright emptiness. The magnificent brightness is once again the treasury of the first common. It is like the great sea of emptiness with no legend views identical with the Buddha. I was certified as being beyond learning. The Buddha sealed and certified me as being at the level of no further learning. In the liberation of the nature of emptiness, I am unsurpassed. My understanding comes from the principle of nature of emptiness and foremost in understanding emptiness. Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As I have been certified, see it, all appearances appear, all appearances enter into nothingness, nothingness and what becomes nothingness both disappear. Turning dramas back to the world is the foremost method. Commentary The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. Now the Buddha is asking all the disciples, the Buddhas, the Bodhisattvas, about how they were satisfied to and obtained the principle of perfect penetration. As I have been certified, say it, all appearances enter into nothingness. Nothingness and what becomes nothingness both disappear. That which brings about emptiness and that which is made empty are both gone. That means that there isn't even emptiness. In Taoism, this is called that which is empty also disappears. Suo Hum Chi In Buddhism, it is called nothingness and what becomes nothingness both disappear. Fei Suo Fei Jin. 
Turning dramas back to the world is the foremost method. Turning the nature of dramas back into the world is the best way. Understanding emptiness is the number one dharma draw. Sutra Shariputra rose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, from distant compass until the present, my mind and views have been pure. In this way, I have undergone as many births as their grains of sand in the Ganges. As to the various transformations and changes of both the mundane and the transcendental, I am able to understand them at one glance and obtain non-obstruction. Commentary Shariputra's mother's name was Shari, and his name means son of Shari. He was foremost in wisdom. Shari means pelican. When Shariputra was in his mother's womb, she would debate with her brother Kaushila and always, always defeat him. His uncle then knew that his sister was carrying a wise child. Shariputra arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, from distant compass until the present, my mind and views have been pure. In this way, I have undergone as many births as there are grains of sand in the Ganges, as to the various transformations and changes of both the mundane and the transcendental. I am able to understand them at one glance and obtain non-obstruction. I can tell at a glance what things are about, whether on the ordinary level or on the sagely level and toward them I've obtained non-obstruction. Sutra, once I met the Kashira Pass on the road and I walked along with the brothers. They spoke about causes and conditions and I awakened to the boundlessness of my mind. Commentary Once I met the Kashira Pass on the road and I walked along with the brothers. As the Kashriya Pass walked along, they spoke about causes and conditions. Upon hearing this drama of causes and conditions, I became enlightened and awakened to the boundlessness of my mind. Before Shariputra left the home life, he met Ashvayit Masheng. While walking on the road, Yashvayit was one of the five bishops the Buddha first crossed over in the Deer Wise Park. Shariputra saw Ashvayit walking in a most awesome and correct manner with magnificent deportment. His eyes did not glance at things, his ears did not even drop, he didn't sleep side long looks at people and he didn't listen to what was going on around him. His eyes watched his nose, his nose regarded his mouth, his mouth heeded his heart. Before this, Shariputra had had an externalist teacher who was called the Brahman Sharan, Sharan Fan Chu. After his teacher died, he had no one to study with. It was then that while walking on the road, he met Yashvayit and admired him so much. He asked him, You have fine compartment, who's your teacher? Ashvayit replied with a verse, all dhammas arise from conditions. All dhammas is because of conditions. The Buddha, the great Shramana, often spoke of this. When Shariputra heard that verse, he immediately became enlightened and was certified to the first version of Ahashi. He went back to his living quarters and repeated the verse to Mahudgadayana. When Mahudgadayana heard it, he also became enlightened. When taking his 200 disciples with him, he went to take refuge with the Buddha. They left the home life and became part of the assembly that always accompanied the Buddha. That's how the account is sometimes told. Here the sutra says that he met the Kashyapa brothers. Since sometimes the sutras say that Shariputra met the Kashyapas and sometimes they say he met the Yashvayit. I think they were probably all walking together at the time. The Kashya Pass and Yashvayit were on the road together. Notice that the text says, and walked along with the brothers. Brothers means not just the Kashya Pass brothers, but also Bishu Yashvayit, who was a drama 
um, who was a Dharma brother. They were talking about causes and conditions, and one said, the dharmas that arise from causes and conditions, I say that they are empty. They are false names as well. They are also called the meaning of the middle way. Probably when Shariputra heard that verse, he came up to ask, What are you talking about? Who's your teacher? And it was then that Yashvayit spoke his verse. Upon hearing it, Shariputra became enlightened. Afterward, he returned to tell Yana, and then they all went to take refuge with the Buddha. Sutra, I followed the Buddha and left to home life. My seeing awareness became bright and perfect. I obtained fearlessness and became an heart. As one of the Buddha's elder disciples, I am born from the Buddha's mouth, transformationally born from the Dharma. Commentary, I followed the Buddha and left the home life. My seeing awareness became bright and perfect. His seeing became the basic substance of enlightenment and was perfected. I obtained fearlessness and became an heart. As one of the Buddha's elder disciples, I am born from the Buddha's mouth, transformationally born from the Dharma. Among the Buddha's disciples, Shariputra was an elder. Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration as I have been certified to it for the mind and the seeing to emit light and for the light to reach throughout knowing and seeing is the foremost method. Commentary The Buddha asks about perfect penetration as I, Shariputra, have been certified to it for the mind and the seeing to emit light and for the light to reach throughout knowing and seeing is the foremost method. When the light is ultimate, then the knowing and seeing are empty. This Dharma door is number one for me. Sutra Universal worthy Bodhisattva arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I have been a Dharma prince with as many thirst come ones as their sons in the Ganges. The thirst come ones of the ten directions tell their disciples who have the roots of a Bodhisattva to cultivate the universal worthy conduct which is named after me. Commentary Universal worthy Bodhisattva is a Bodhisattva of great conduct. He has ten great royal vows, royal vows which we recite at morning recitation. They are to worship and respect all Buddhas, to praise the first come ones, to cultivate the giving of offerings, to repent and reform all karmic faults, to compliantly rejoice the merit and virtue, to request the turning of the Dharma wheel, to request that the Buddha remain in the world, to always follow the Buddhas in study, to forever accord with living beings, to universally transfer all merit and virtue. These are called the Ten Kings of Vows of Universal Worthy Bodhisattva. In the Avatam Saka Sutra, there is an entire chapter called The Conduct and Vows of Universal Worthy. His practices and the power of his vows are especially great, and so he has a lot of affinities with living beings. He writes a six tusked white elephant. The color white represents the one Buddha Virhaiko, and the six tusks represent the six paramitas. Universal worthy Bodhisattva arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I have been a Dharma prince with as many thirst come ones as there are sons in the Ganges. In the past, with that many Buddhas, I have been a disciple of the Dharma king. The thirst come ones of the ten directions tell their disciples who have the roots of a Bodhisattva, that is, if they have the propensity for Bodhisattva root, to cultivate the universal worthy conduct, they should cultivate the ten kings of vows. This conduct is one which is named after me. Sutra, world honored one, I use my mind to listen and distinguish the knowledge and views of living beings. In other regions, as many realms away as their sense in the Ganges, if there is any living being who discovers the conduct of universal worthy, I immediately mount the six-tusked elephant 
and create hundreds of thousands of reduplicated bodies which go to those places. Although their obstacles may be so heavy that they do not see me, I secretly wrap their crowds, protect and comfort them, and have them be successful. Commentary, wound honored one, I use my mind to listen. I don't use the, the organ of the ear to hear with, I use my mind and distinguish the knowledge and views of living beings. When I make distinctions about living beings, it is not with the discriminating mind, but with the true mind to determine the faculties of all living beings. I do this not only in this world, but even in other regions, as many realms away as their sense in the Ganges, even in places very, very far away from here. If there is any living being who discovers and wants to cultivate the conduct of universal worthy, I immediately mount my six tasked elephant and create hundreds of thousands of reduplicated bodies which go to those places. I make my transformation bodies and go to those places. Although their obstacles may be so heavy that they do not see me, I still give to that person I secretly wrap their crowds invisible to them, though I may be. People who cultivate the Dharma sometimes will feel as if there were a bug crawling on the top of their head or as if someone were patting them on the head. Sometimes one will feel as though there were an insect crawling on one's face. When this happens, you should not try to brush the feeling away with your hand. The reason is that it is actually the a Buddha or Bodhisattva rubbing on John on the crown, rubbing you on the crown. If you are attentive, you will notice it. They are blessing us, so you should not try to brush them away. If you are sincere, you can experience this feeling. I protect and comfort them and help them be successful. I help them become accomplished in their cultivation. Sutra. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. The basic cause I speak of in my case is listening with the mind to discover and distinguish at ease. This is the foremost method. Commentary. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. The basic cause I speak of in my case is the experience I had on the cause ground. It is listening with the mind to discover and distinguish at ease. I listen in order to discover the knowledge and views of living beings. These discriminations of the true mind are done with ease, and I have obtained self-mastery. This is the foremost method. I consider this Dumbledore the best. People should not get angry because if they do, demonic obstacles can arise. Be a little less fiery and a little more intent upon your study of the Buddha Dharma. Sutra Sundarananda arose from his seat, bowed to the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, When I first left home, I followed the Buddha to enter the way. I received the complete precepts, but my mind was always too scattered for samadhi, and I could not attain the state of having no outflows. The wound honored one torture coached the and me to contemplate the white spot at the tip of our noses. Commentary. There was Nanda, Ananda, and Sundarananda. Sundarananda was the Buddha's cousin. The first part of his name is Sundari. After his wife, Sundari means beautiful. She was captivating. Nanda, the later part of his name, means happiness. See. Since there were several disciples with similar names, he was referred to as Sundari's Nanda. Sundarananda arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, When I first left home and followed the Buddha to enter the way, I received the complete precepts, but my mind was always too scattered for samadhi, and I could not attain the state of having no outflows. I cultivated the way with the Buddha, and I carefully observed the precepts, but my samadhi power was not sufficient. My mind was always on the move. I could not accomplish the level of being out without outflows. The world honored one touch Kaush Thila and me to contemplate the white spot at the tip of our noses. Because I was so scattered, 
the Buddha taught me and also taught Shariputra's uncle, Mahakavosthila, to look at the tips of our nose, of our noses, and regard the little white spot that appears when both eyes stare there. Sutra, from the first, I contemplated intently. After three weeks, I saw that the breath in my nostrils looked like smoke when I inhaled and exhaled. My body and mind became right inside, and I perfectly understood the external world to the point that everything became empty and pure like crystal. The smoky appearance gradually disappeared, and the breath in my nostrils became white. Commentary, he goes on to say, when I cultivated according to this method and developed my skill, from the first I contemplated intently. After three weeks, I saw that the breath in my nostrils looked like smoke when I inhaled and exhaled. I regarded the white spot at the tip of my nose with great concentration. After 21 days, my breath looked like smoke. My body and mind became bright inside, and I perfectly understood the external world. Inside, there was light, and I was clear about what was going on in all the worlds to the point that everything became empty and pure like crystal. My body, mind, and the world became emptiness and was pure in substance. It was all as clear as crystal. The breath in my nostrils had become like smoke, but this subsided. The smoky appearance gradually disappeared and the breath in my nostrils became white. From daily contemplation like this, my breath became white like the white spot at the tip of my nose. Sutra, my mind opened and my eyes were extinguished. Every inhalation and exhalation of breath was transformed into light which illumined the ten directions and I attained a hardship. The world honored one predicted that in the future I would obtain body. Commentary. My mind opened and my outflows were extinguished. When my breath became white, my mind suddenly opened to enlightenment and I put an end to all outflows. Every inhalation and exhalation of breath was transformed into light, which illumined the ten directions and I attained a hardship. First, my breath looked smoky, then it became white, like the tip of my nose, and finally it turned into light. The light shone on everything in the Dharma realm of the Ten Directions. The world honored one predicted that in the future I would obtain Samadhi, he said that in the future I would certainly become a Buddha. Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration. I did it by means of the of the disappearance of the breath until eventually the breath emitted light and the light completely extinguished my outflows. This is the foremost method. Commentary Sudarananda says that he thinks cultivation of a nose consciousness is extremely important. For him it was the best Dharma doll. Sutra Pranami Chanyani Putra arose from his seat, bowed to the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, For vast compass I have possessed unobstructed eloquence. When I discuss suffering and emptiness, I penetrate deeply into the actual appearance, and in the same way I give subtle and wonderful instruction to the assembly concerning the secret Dharma doors of as many first come ones as there are since in the Ganges, I have also obtained fearlessness. Commentary Purna Maitre Yani Putra is named after his mother and father. Purna, which means completeness, man, was his father's name. Maitre Yani, which means compassion, Tzu, was his mother's name. Putra means son, Tzu. So he was the son of completeness, compassion. He arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, For vast compass I have possessed unobstructed eloquence. There are four kinds of eloquence. Unobstructed eloquence with dramas. Unobstructed eloquence in meaning. Unobstructed eloquence in phrasing. Unobstructed eloquence with delight in speaking. 
No matter what drama he discussed, he could explain it very clearly. Not only that, but he brought forth the meaning in just a sentence or two. His skill in phrasing was such that he could say a few words that would encompass infinitely many meanings. He was brief and to the point. No matter what you wanted explained, he thoroughly enjoyed doing it. He was not like Shun Drapan Thakka, who refused to speak the drama when he was a drama master, and as a result ended up being terribly stupid. Puna liked to speak the drama. When I discussed the suffering and emptiness, I penetrated deeply into the actual appearance. I would tell how all things are suffering, are empty, um, impermanent, and like self. But when he did so, his explanation of this doctrine reached all the way through the doctrine, through to the doctrine of the actual appearance, where there is no appearance, and yet there is nothing which does not have an appearance. And in the same way, I give Sato wonderful instruction to the assembly concerning the secret Dharma doors of as many thirst come ones as there are sense in the Ganges. He was able to discuss the most esoteric doctrines and reveal them to living beings by means of subtle principles. I have also obtained fearlessness. I have obtained an obstructed eloquence and the power of fearlessness. Sutra, the world honored one, knew that I had great eloquence, and so he made use of my voice in turning the wheel of the drama. He taught me how to disseminate it. I joined the Buddha to help him turn the wheel. I accomplished a hardship through the lion's throw raw. The world honored one certified me as being foremost in speaking drama. Commentary Purna accomplished the way by means of the tongue consciousness. He did it by speaking drama. So you see, it is possible to become enlightened and to be certified to the fruition by speaking the drama. All you need to do is to deeply answer one door in your cultivation. Decide on one and then cultivate it. Don't be scattered in your practice. Doing one drama today, switching to another one tomorrow, and changing your mind again the day after. When you change around like that, you waste your time and you never master any drama. You have to choose one and vigorously develop your skill in it. The world only one knew that I had great eloquence, and so he made use of my voice in turning the wheel of the drama. He taught me how to disseminate it. No one could out-debate Pona. When he spoke the drama, his voice was full and resonant and powerful. In a gathering of a thousand or even ten thousand people, there would have no need for him to use a microphone or amplifying system, he could be heard easily. The Buddha taught me to lecture the sutras and speak Dharma. I joined the Buddha to help him turn the wheel. I accomplished a hardship through the lion's roar. I would represent the Buddha in speaking the Dharma, and my voice became like the lion's roar. When the lion roars, the myriad creatures cower. When the heavenly demons and adherents of external paths heard this his voice, they were subdued. The world honored one certified me as being foremost in speaking Dharma. Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration. I use the sound of Dharma to subdue demons and adversaries and melt away my outflows. This is the foremost method commentary. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. With my tongue, I proclaim the sound of Dharma to subdue demons and adversaries. I tamed the heavenly demons and controlled the five adversary desires, wealth, sex, fame, food, and sleep. These five desires are hostile thieves that steal people's treasures. In this way, I was able to melt away my outflows. This is a foremost method. I used the tongue consciousness and proclaimed the wonderful Dharma. This is the best method.